Welcome back to the Lucas Oil Raceway Racers Tribune. I'm Sean Chambers with Lucas Oil Raceway and the NHRA. Episode number two is going to feature Aliyah Wishmeyer. Now, it may not be a name you recognize, and that's because Aliyah Wishmeyer is actually in her first year uh, in the sport of drag racing. She does not have a history in drag racing. She didn't race juniors. 20, uh, 21 years old, uh, a college student who's trying to pick up drag racing now, and not just uh, picking up the sport of drag racing but she's jumping straight into a super comp dragster in the 2020 season 2019 uh, she did not have any experience 2020 she's chasing the points uh, for super comp in the lucas oil drag ra racing series an incredible story she's working with her father uh, to, to hopefully uh, accomplish a goal that they set in 2018 at the u.s nationals i'll, I'll let alaya uh, tell you all about the game plan that her and her father came up with two years ago, 2018, at the uh, 64th running of the NHRA U.S. Nationals. to tell you all about the Unracer Tribune. Most people would start out at a bracket race, more likely in sportsmen, or even if they're young enough junior drag students. You're jumping right into a super into, into a super comp dragster here, and and you really don't have that much experience, right? What's why? <laughs> um, I've actually grown up coming to the U.S. Nationals. My papa used to take my dad when he was a kid, and so my dad started taking us when we moved to Indiana. And I always wanted to race junior dragsters, and my mom was very <laughs> against her daughter racing. Um, so in 2018 we were sitting at the u.s nationals and i told my dad i was like this is what i want to do and so we made a game plan and our goal that we've made is this year in 2020 we will be at the u.s nationals and now correct me if i'm wrong i think you guys said the other day that you were at the u.s nationals in 2018 and by the time you left that day you had your game plan ready yeah we didn't even make it out to the truck in the parking lot we had a plan set and we followed almost everything so far, so... Well, what, so what, what was the plan, right? Do you have any details you can give us on? Like, if somebody's sitting at the U.S. Nationals here in 2020, what's the recipe to success <laughs> for racing at the U.S. Nationals in 2022? So, like, our first step, I actually went through the Doug Foley experience um, here at Lucas Oil, and once I did that, I was like, all right, I want to go faster, I want to <laughs> keep doing this, and so my dad and I went up to Route 66, and we went to Frank Holly's school, for three days and I got licensed for the super comp through that last May and then after we had the license we were like okay it's time to buy a car so we <laughs> would drive to Kentucky and Ohio and we ended up going to Norwalk to pick up our car we went one day watched it run and we went back the next day when he was getting ready to put it on the trailer we put it on ours and got it home <laughs> so so was there was there any Right, because you said mom wouldn't let you let you drive a, a junior, right? She was a little too too scared for that. I guess, right? That's yes. what moms do, right? So, what was that conversation like? Was your mom here with you that day in the game plan stages? No. So, what was that conversation like when you were like, "Hey, mom, guess what?" Um, it was kind of. She was like, "Okay, clearly this is something you want to do because you've been asking for it for about ten years, <laughs> but now it's like, okay, we can do it." Mm -hmm. Um. So she's very supportive of it. It definitely gets her going. She always is like, is the car supposed to shake like that? <laughs> and like, just questions that those that aren't in racing would ask. Sure. So, yeah. And, and to that point, I mean, you said you guys came to the U.S. Nationals, but I mean, your, your dad didn't race. You guys are kind of in the dark here when it comes to a lot. I mean, you're, you're really starting from scratch um, and, and, I mean, a lot of people would say you're kind of behind the eight ball with that because, I mean, how many racers out here are, are juniors, right? I think we have 30-some-odd juniors at, at this bracket race alone. Um, and, and you're young, but you're new at it, and you're racing against – I know that there are other super pro drivers out there today and other uh, you know, super comp drivers that are, are, are young, but they've been doing it for a very long time, yeah. right? So do you have – I mean, do you feel like you're behind a little bit? Like how what's that frustration level like with, you know, jumping into a, a – a pretty big car yeah. and not really having much experience. Um, 
it's very frustrating because I know what I'm supposed to do and I know like I want to do it so bad but the whole process of letting off the trans brake on the right time and not red lighting I'm very I'm struggling a lot with red lighting and um, figuring figuring out that consistency each time of how far you staged to be able to get our numbers so we can not succeed in a bracket race. Where, where do you go when you are like so you're struggling with you said you know you're, you're struggling with red lighting right now where do you go for advice I mean I know your, your dad helps you and I'll ask about him in a second but uh, you know because you are so new and, and because you are kind of figuring a lot of this out on the fly where do you go if you have questions? Where do you go if you need help with something, if you need advice? Have you met any other racers? You know, what's what's kind of your resource for figuring things out? We, um, my dad actually has a friend and coworker who is one of my sponsors, and um, he has a racing shop. He races and his son races juniors. So normally we'll call Tim and be like, listen, this is what's going on, we need help. <laughs> Or Tim will come to the races with us a lot of the times because Sammy will be in the juniors. Sure. Um, but like this weekend, they are in Terre Haute, and so they didn't come, and we don't want to bother them on their cell phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have another friend out of Connecticut, Roy Neiman, and he actually worked on a Nitro Funny Car for U.S. Nationals. Okay. So he knows a lot about it, and. He's probably tired of getting my phone calls <laughs> at this point, but it's so helpful. So, yeah. You mentioned just real quick. You know, you, you mentioned you've got some sponsors, and so so two parts here. First, well, you give the sponsors a shout out, right? Like we, yeah. we'll, we'll we'll ask who your sponsors are, and then second part to that is, uh, was it did you did you have any issues getting sponsors? Right, like because what my thinking would be, you know, if you're a junior, okay, you're young, figure it out. You go to a sponsor, they might help you out. But now you're like, I'm gonna drive a super comp car, but I've never done it before. Yeah. So did you have any issues getting sponsors? And, and who who are your sponsors? I have Arthur Racing and um, Performance Parts okay. out of Martinsville, okay. Indiana. Um, he's my only sponsor at this point, okay. <laughs> but it's been very hard to get sponsors just because I have no racing background. Yeah. Um, this weekend was my first race, and you kind of just have to build your portfolio off sure. of what you do. And as of now, I have no portfolio, so nobody's <laughs> going to give you money for nothing. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I know you did have a, a, a couple round wins this weekend, yes. uh, and and you know to some extent, Division Three is is a very very competitive division in the NHRA, uh, and and the Missoula Raceway, you know, we have. Quite, we have a, a large group of racers that are here all the time. So, kind of the two sides of the coin are you probably pick the toughest track to race at this weekend. <laughs> and then, but 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 then on, on the other side of that coin is you had a couple round wins, right? The, these a lot of racers are very close. It's a very you know it's kind of a home away from home type feel for some of these racers. And pick up a couple round wins, you know, people start to recognize you. Um, I could see that probably helping out a little bit. Yes. Um, so, so I did. I do want to ask about your dad because I know, uh, I, I know I you see him. You know, for those of us that have been watching you this weekend, and I know you've been out to some testing tunes as well. Uh, your dad's right there, yes. and uh, uh, he again, without having a racing background, he may. I'm sure he knows a thing or two. I'm sure he's studied up. I'm yes. sure he's got some experience, but without having actually having a racing background, he's probably figuring out on the fly. Yeah. So what's what's how's that dynamic where both of you probably at times just look at each other and like, mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We so he's always had a street car and then my grandpa always had several street cars and dad grew up around it, building engines, all of that. But then when it comes to racing, my dad's never been down a track, <laughs> never even set foot on a track until I went to Frank's school. So like it was kinda walking in the dark for both of us. Um as of now, he's definitely like my right hand man and yeah. helps me figure everything out, keeps me calm when things go bad. But um, he's definitely spent his hours studying the rule books and looking at our numbers and everything. Um, so, yeah. what, what what do you guys do? I mean, I know, that, like you said, there's rule books and stuff like that, but um, I mean, how much do you guys record and watch film? Do you guys? You know, talk to other people. What do you do to kind of do that research and try to, you know, between now and your next race, what's going to be, what are the things that you do to make sure the next race is better? So, 
luckily today I drove separate. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we are out. Yeah. Um, but normally we will have a conversation in the car of what happened on our way home, and then my mom's always here, or my sister, and they stand in the back and take our videos and see if like I'm straight, if I backed up straight, how was my burnout, and so I can like evaluate everything. True. Sure. Um, and then we look at numbers in a sane amount. <laughs> it's ungodly how much we look at numbers. Um, and then other than that, just normally at home, we um, if I'm home from school, be in the garage the whole weekend or my mom will send me pictures of my dad and the dogs on the floor working on the car so it's just always something to do so so you you mentioned school and it's been a, it's been a strange couple of months here in, in our world with um, with lots of things you know you can't turn on the news without something uh, unique, you know, there's some things that we haven't really had to deal with in, in a long time, right? And, and and so I know you've been probably home some because I know schools have been out and, and things like that. But you're a nursing student, yes. And I I I have a college degree. I have friends that are nurses. I have friends that went through nursing school, and that is a whole different ball game when it comes <laughs> to college degrees. Uh, so so you and what year are you? I'm going to be a junior. So you're going to be a junior. And you have, two years ago, almost two years ago, you decided you would have been, what, a senior in high school? So you were a senior in high school. The past two years, you've been working to be a competitive drag racer. Yes. All while being a nursing student. Yes. How? Um, there's been a lot of mental breakdowns, <laughs> a lot of late nights. Um, my freshman year in school was absolutely the hardest year, just figuring out that time management, the studying, but this year is going to be an experiment for sure too, now that we actually have the yeah, car. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of races that start Thursday, Friday, yep. and I have clinicals on Fridays, so it's just a work around that. Um, it's definitely having a support system but sure. well, so then what's you know you're 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 going you know, obviously I assume you want to be a nurse you want to work in the medical field um what is it that you want to do in drag racing right like how you know there's we have racers out here we deal with on a regular basis who you know they've been racing here for 20 30 40 years as bracket racers in the sportsman class or in the pro class and they and and that's that's what they love that's what they enjoy um and they'll do it for as long as they can. What's what is that for you? What's your goal? Where are you trying to get in the drag racing world? So right now I'm in super comp, and then for brackets and super pro. Yeah. Um. Actually, in a week I'm going back to Frank Holly School in my car to learn more of the technical, absorb more information, sure. and hopefully come out a bit stronger. Past that. My goal is to be in a top fuel dragster at the end of this. Really? And I, that's always been my goal. But. That, that's, you, you know, that, that's, yeah, that's, that's one of those where, in, in my opinion, everybody, every kid grows up and wants, to, you know, they want to be a fireman, right? They want to be an astronaut type, you know, they, they have those lofty goals. But the reality is, is that there are firemen, there are astronauts, there are, you know, professional athletes. There are these people, right? Like, you know, everybody always says, "Oh, yeah, yeah, we know you want to, you want to play in the big leagues, right?" But people do, and it's one of those things where, where finding, you know, the, the people who make it there, finding the mix of whatever it is, whether it's the sports system, whether it's you know the the time that you put into the craft, whether it's you know, just the, all the different balances that go into getting to that professional level, right? It's like when you find that, you know, like I would just wish you could bottle it and yeah. give it out to people because it's like, I mean, you talk about going to nursing school and, and you're trying to figure all this out and you have such a late start compared to everybody yeah. else. So, uh, that I mean, kudos to you for having the goal. Hopefully you find it, right? Like, yeah. if you do, let us all know how you do it. We'll do another, we'll do a follow-up interview here in a few years whenever you're in a topical dragster and we'll say, how'd you do it? Because there's so many people who can't figure it out. Yeah, hopefully we get there. Um, yeah, so, um, so, um, 
this season, right? Your this is your first season. Yes. What's on the schedule? How are you gonna? You know, where are you gonna be at this year? What's kind of in uh, in the planner, right? Where where are you gonna be? How are you gonna get there? Um, we're chasing the national event points, so we look at oil drags. Yeah. yeah. So we can enter the U.S. Nationals at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. So our goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if I make one pass at the U.S. Nationals, I've met my goal, so that's okay, <laughs> and we'll be back next year. But other than that, we're just, like this weekend, this bracket race, we just want to come and get as much yeah. seat exposure yeah. and tuning as we can. Um, but other than Yeah, no, I, I think um, it's so interesting to see. We talked to... Uh, Devin Eisenhower for one of these episodes, and and he has he's he's a young he's uh, just a year or two older than you, and super gas national champion. He raced juniors here for you know right, until he was eighteen for like almost, uh, I think he was nine to eighteen years old. He raced juniors here, and the one piece of advice he gave, uh, you know, for somebody a junior dragster who's watching the video or something like that, he he said. Learn as much as you can about the technical side of it. It's unlike most sports, you know, this isn't a, a muscle memory type. You can't take a thousand shots in a gym and, and get better in this type of sport, right? It's if you feel something that's not normal, you have to be able to identify it, and then you have to be able to fix it. Yes. Um, so that was that was his piece of advice for you know it was targeted toward junior dragsters, I think, but I think that probably applies in your situation too, yeah. being able to figure out. You know the the things that aren't muscle memory, the things that you, as a driver, aren't necessarily controlling, and, and then be able to adjust and fix those things, despite the fact that you are not the one doing it. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. So, I, do you have any any advice? Do you have any? You know, maybe start younger, right? Is that your advice? <laughs> I wish I would have started <laughs> younger. Yeah, that's probably my number one. Thing. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I would have to agree with Devin. My biggest thing is being hands-on with the car. Yeah. You can't just get in the car and drive it and not know what's going on. Mm-hmm. And that's the biggest leap from the licensing classes because that's not your car. Everybody does it for you. And then when you come out to the track and if something goes wrong, you have an hour, 30 minutes to get it ready yeah. in the pits. and. Like yesterday, I made a pass and I couldn't shift. My shifter didn't go. And I was like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. And so I was on my rev limiter and I had to let out of it. And that's what sent us home yesterday. But um, when we got to the back, we were like, is the air tank on? Just simple rookie (laughs) mistakes. Yeah, the air tank was on. It was out. The gauge was reading wrong. So it's just like... Simple things like that. But it won't happen. You, you'll now, yeah. like now, you know, right? Yeah. So it's the day the... I was like, "Is the air tank on? Mm-hmm. Is pressure right?" Like, <laughs> just like all these things. But just being hands on and knowing when something doesn't feel right and get out of it is probably the biggest advice I have. I, you know, this is this. Like I said, I don't have a ton of experience. I've never made a pass down the track, any track. I've uh, never. Never taken the tree. I, I I don't know any more than anyone else. In fact, I probably know less. Um, and and it's one of those things where um, you know kudos kudos to you for, for taking it on. There's all these. We have a lot of people in the staging lanes who have been doing this for 10, 15, 20 plus years, and have been doing it since they were five years old. Yeah. And so so kudos to you for taking on the challenge, and not just taking on the challenge, but Taking it seriously, right? It's one thing, and like I said, there are, you know, everybody wants to drive a top fuel dragster. Everybody wants to drive. They want to be on the nitro teams and, and, and the pro teams and things like that. But it takes somebody who's who is willing to figure out how to do it to get to that level. So kudos to you for for saying, you know what? I don't age is, doesn't matter. You know, I don't I don't have experience, but I'm gonna do it. Here's yeah. the game plan, and here are the steps that we're gonna do, and if. You know, I don't know how the steps went. You may have failed a time or two, yeah, but just, but yeah. you're in a dragster, yes. right? You're in you're in a dragster. You're figuring it out. You won a couple rounds t- today and over the weekend. I'm sure you're going to win a few more. Um, so so again, kudos to you for figuring it out and, and giving it a shot.
Thank you for watching another episode of the Racers Tribune. And don't forget, if you have a story to tell or if you know someone who does, head over to lucasoilraceway.com and find the Racers Tribune tab at the top of the page for more information on the Racers Tribune, what it is, and how you can be a part of it. Thank you and see you next time.